Well, welcome back. We're ready to go. Map number one. Timberman taking on B Hop on the old nuke map and ready to go. It's Laz and Paladin to bring you that action. Timberman starting on that CT side. Dual Berettas for Snav and Dare. And armor to boot, so look out for them to do the heavy hitting amounts of damage here. It's gonna be a little bit of a mini pop. They smoke the top of it. And Pharaoh just goes bounding outside, trying to get all of this control. He's got hell control, maybe a little bit of ramp, and he actually gets That's the big. opener. But it doesn't matter. I, I honestly don't know where b are heading at this point. All these kills definitely suggest under the B-side, and that, that is definitely what's happening at this point. Kel and Dare are quite disjointed. Join hands at the bottom of double, and now look to try to retake with no kit in this 2v3. Well, I mean, still the big advantage here for B-Hop, of course. They're in a good position here for the post. Oh my goodness. There was, or that was well not long for this world. And there we go, Cal by himself now on a one-on-two. HP's low and gone and removed. And that's B-Hop picking up the pistol in pretty interesting fashion. Some good work coming in from Vero, like you said, going outside, just popping in the underneath into hell. That was huge. I mean, the fact he was able to win that fight on the player in heaven, that just gained them so much real estate. Yeah, then you, I, I believe you had other players bound down vent as well. And so as soon as Feral gets all of that information and kills outside in into hell, it just sorts, it just, just throws the Timberman defense into a complete loop. And they can't respond quick enough. So a nice set piece from B-Hop to commit to that early on. Now it's trying to convert against this four spot. Snav. MP9, Dare already down to 33 HP with the scout of his own. Gonzo does not go all the way down secret. He has to be aware of Snav with this MP9. Could be good for a couple of years. He spotted it. Yeah, he's in a good spot, but I thought he might have been able to get this, but a nice little bit of a pre-fire gives his spot away, so they know that he's, he's there. But look at this. They back off on this. So they're still going to be grouped up towards secret, waiting things out. Still got some time to work with. I mean, we're talking a minute over the clock here, and now it looks like it might even be the pinch inside of Lobby, inside of Mini. You know, Gonzo ready to go with that AK. I mean, he is the big heavy hitter, right? Him and both Andrews kind of just holding things down with the big rifles compared. A lot of time baited, though. They're so wary of a potential B play that you've held Frankie on ramp, and you've you've kept Snav on the lower bomb side. I think Dare as well. So you only have two players on his top site. Penguin gets one kill on the Shane, and Kel cannot get things done. Sure, Dare gets a tag of his own, but this 3v4, it's ugly. I'm sorry, it's 3v5. That's, that makes yeah. it even uglier. Makes it way uglier, right? I mean, this is not a good situation. I mean, Dare is already down to 33. Snav, I mean, this is where they just have to save these guns. I mean, they tried to force up, like you said. They tried to put a lot of money in the board to bring in that second round back, but it is going to go for Biop, and this is a good start for Biop. I mean, the last time they've had a victory on this map, I mean, was way back in April. I mean, this was against, uh, I think that was Take Flight they took down, but that was quite some time ago. I already like some of the ideas here from Biop. They're trying to be very decisive outside two rounds in. You know, you obviously saw the initial pistol round with Feral bounding outside into hell. And now this round, you have Gonzo taking that early secret control, taking an early duel falling off and then just walking all the way back to mini to join hands with that lobby crunch and as soon as he just shows that little bit of presence timberman are so worried that b op are going to commit to another b play that they gamble somewhat with a couple players ramp uh, and the side anchor of snav down and lower as well and b hop catch that timing beautifully to have themselves an easy anti-eco conversion or anti force by conversion. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I knew and, what you're uh, picking up. I knew what you're throwing now, down. Now they have to get rid of this anti eco. Yeah, this is going to be important too. I mean, you, even you and I have been able to see some some big rounds, even where the CTs were down by two, and they somehow bring it back in this kind of a awkward purchase and awkward gun situation for them, right? But this is asking a lot. And I mean, even Penguin's got a good position here just in case somebody's going to play aggressive outside a secret. Biop taking this really slow. A nice catch right now. Penguin actually gets caught in the crosshair. So now he's down to 30. There's a little he's bit more stuck. pressure coming in. And they're going to press on this. And there you go. That's a free gun right there. That's a Galil picked up. And now Frankie has to come Ooh. away. He's not able to. So has to pull on back with the D. Gets a swing and a miss. And now you can see Biop. They got ramp control pretty convincingly. 
Yeah, but look at this huge rotation that's being caused. I mean, we're not going to be on this. Frank needed another one. And Dare can't get out of the and he gets one on a feral into the 3v3 a potential retake on the cards they don't have a kit but they do have at least a man even situation to potentially pull things through i loaded up in the next it's definitely not out of the realm of the possibility to go for this one no it's still a doable situation but i mean the hp is low right i mean two players combined here for timber in they're down to 42 but they're gonna have to be able to find something gonzo takes some big damage but it is B-Hop coming up big here. They're able to pick up another one. A Molly placed right in front of the door. This is just problematic. They have to get out of this. Save the MP9. Keep the Galil in the hands. Not bad, can, all things considered. But, I mean, again, it's just not the round win. But this gives B-Hop a good comfort lead. Very curious with how they're going to approach their buy round here to start out their T campaign. Is it going to be aggressive outside control yet again? Or are they going to try to slow things down and maybe hold on to lobby control regardless what's most important is, is it's going to get harder to take that outside control now that dare's got an awp in his hands this guy loves to get aggressive get in your face vie for map control and make sure that you have to earn that part of the map outside smokes come in and it'll definitely be that idea yet again oh that nade great big, nades dude. here though and yeah I nearly thought that would have had a touchdown on the Gonzo, but they live. And these diagonal smokes should be oh, able to beautiful shot. Co like cover people, but I I don't know what Dare saw there. An opening nonetheless. And they they get secret again for a fourth round in a row, but it comes at a cost. Yeah, it definitely comes at a cost because I mean Gonzo's he's uh he is Gonzo, so for this round anyways, round number four, but they got some real estate so they can work around a little bit, and that's Frankie that's just kind of sitting in the back of the site. But again, the CT's got a good setup. They have the man advantage. They haven't been in this kind of a position for quite some time. And now a little bit more pressure here for B-Hop. Now being the man down, they have to make a play. They want to equalize it, right? But uh, now again. again, there it is. There's the op. Darius is finding two now. The op alone is just singing. It's definitely beautiful. And if you're B-Hop, you don't want this guy to get rolling. He's one of the most hot streak oppers that we have in NA. And when he's going... I think there are very few people within this league that can stop him. And it's great to see him put the op to good use early on. We're going to have a drop down into vents. And we're going to try to target the B side again. Penguin gets a huge kill onto Frankie. The B side, B side anchor is dead. They're in a 3v4 situation. But with three rifles up, it's definitely a winnable sight hold here for B-Hop. But if you're Timberman, you've got to convert this. But look how far away they are here, Laz. Yeah, this is a little awkward. I mean, because you still have some players on ramp, but I mean, they have to get moving now quickly, right? I mean, they still got a little bit to work with. They got three kits. A couple smokes here for utility. They're snap, able to find a good one. There it is. Now we're starting to see Timberman getting themselves on the board. It's all just down to one feral. No hope at all to get this. And there we go. Timberman going to be able to pick up their first round being the gun round and only the cost of one player. But, you know, a little bit of a weird situation in terms of the retake, but it does come out pretty nicely. Yeah, got a little dicey there, but I think B-Hop were a bit too disjointed there. They really relied on a kill getting pulled back where you know you had a player back silo that was flashing in a ramp player. And since that kill couldn't get converted, it pretty much falls apart. Everybody else is, is very disjointed. You got to give credit to Dare, though. Uh, starting off strong in that first buy round with the AWP out. Gets the opening frag and pushes it for another man advantage. But... With that, another buy round here for B-Hop. They're going to go for a double nade stack onto the back of Silo. Doesn't... Oh. oh, it actually does hit Dare. Chunk down to 46 HP. Yeah, he's playing an aggressive angle. I mean, if he can get this, this could be big. Spots the shoulder Ooh. shot a bit too early, though. That shoulder was peaking, but he wasn't able to find it. Now he's surviving with 20 HP. Nothing here against B-Hop. So they definitely uh, wounded some of their opponents right now, but they are still grouped up on side of... Uh, on roof, I mean, they got some of the utility that, that they want to go for the execute. They can definitely do this. And yeah, it kind of looking like they want to, right? The Molly's going to come tom on top of Hut. Flush this player out. They still got a lot of time to work with here, Paladin. They're still going to go. I mean, look at all this yeah, mini pressure right that they've gotten early on. Penguin just gets a free kill on Nikel. It leaves another player compromised on the site, but the trades work out wonderfully for B-Hop. 
Into the 2v2, they should be able to get the bomb planted, but Dare snuck up. He snuck up and the bomb doesn't go Beautiful. down. Beautiful. Right before the digits are punched, Andrew is left scratching his head, wondering what the hell just happened. <laughs> and he isn't aware of Frankie. Stuck up in Mustang, and he does well to get a second on the board for Timberman. What a, what a round there from, from the Timberman to hold on there. Yeah, it really was. And I mean, now this is two rounds in a row. No bomb plant which got denied, that was huge, right? Like you said, that was a big old denial. I mean, otherwise I could have put them with uh, the money situation to get another gun round in, but right now it's just gonna be the Tech Nines with some utility a little bit later. It's not terrible, but you know, he'll he'll do for now, I guess, for this round six. But the question will be, what do they wanna go for? Lots of utility being burned. It looks like they're gonna try to go a little bit of a fake in towards Squeaky, but now the group up towards Ramp possibly. Frankie's gonna get again tested. Here's a lot. Spray's coming in. That's a multi of two. Can it be more? It will not. Gonna fall, but now the op's ready to go into the crosshair. And there it is, a one-two. And we're back to an even game. Well done from Timberman to dispatch of the force buy. That's some more motivation and confidence in their back pockets. And it's honestly going to cause a lot of respect to have to be issued for B-Hop. They're going to have to slow down their defaults a little bit more. But, I mean, we've seen how much pressure they've been able to get outside seemingly for free. And the fact that Timberman are still able to pull three rounds back bodes well for, for the CT side. Now Frankie's getting the confidence to aggress in. He's got a flash for him to fight. But Penguin and Gonzo punishes both Shane and Frankie. And... Now they can just rest on their laurels. They've got quite a bit of utility to, to just have a topside execute. Uh, Timberman are going to try to push for something back with a retake of outside somewhat. They're going to push up from secret and you'll have aggression on top vent. But they'll throw these outside smokes and they can literally go wherever they want at this point and, and trade their way through. Yeah, you got to give it to Timberman. I mean, kind of mixing up the playbook a little bit, trying to be a bit more aggressive. Like you said, Frankie, I think he was getting a little bit excited. Just feeling a little bit, but now it gives B-Hop an easier chance here to go for the sight hit. Snap here is going to be playing on top of the Mustang, ready to go, and actually does get taken out right <laughs> away. So there's Penguin again, able to find that entry. This is what you and I saw before. Penguin just lighting up the server, finding these, you know, impact kills, and there it is. Timberman, I mean, down to two versus four. Bombs already planted. Unless they can find these multi-kills quick like we just saw there from Kel, this could be just a leading round here for B-Hop. Yeah, B-Hop got to hold on to this one. I think Timberman should opt away from this. We know how fragile the CT economy can be. And yeah, I don't I don't think Dare wants to be a part of this whatsoever. B-Hop confirmed themselves a fourth, and it comes down to just punishing that outside aggression. I like the idea from Timberman, but... The flash just isn't strong enough to completely blind. I believe that was Gonzo and, and Penguin chiming in, but the the kill to secure the round from Penguin to get that kill onto that top top uh, top uh, what, do you, what do you call it position? Forgetting completely. Words. Heaven, yes. There we um, go. <laughs> and takes him out. I mean that that secures a potential position where Snap can pull things back. Uh, B hop figure things out and luckily they'll be able to hold on to quite a number of, of weapons i mean andrew has, has brought the awp out once but honestly we've been seeing how effective the five rifles have been they've been a little bit mobile it allows them to show a little bit more mini pressure if they want to go outside quickly they can but at this point they're gonna hold up this is definitely a different looking B hop heading in around number eight. No outside pressure whatsoever. Not even smokes being dropped. They're just waiting for some kind of lobby crunch themselves and just sitting there in, in a lobby, hoping for any any sort of aggression, but nothing is coming towards them. Well, this is the weaker side here for Timberman too, right? This or their CT side is about a forty percent win rate. So the fact they're you know going toe to toe here. The first eight rounds is not a bad sign, but they're going to have to do a little bit more to go in their comfort area here for the T side. But like you said, I mean, B-Hop sitting on the five AKs, no op really. I don't actually mind this, especially on T side. I feel like that actually might not be a terrible situation. But look at how they're playing this again. They're just playing very slow, waiting things out, having one person lurk. 
That's going to be Penguin again, meaning that entry point. He's already outside into yard. And look at that right there, Paladin. They got ramp control just like that. And that's that conditioning, right? They threw the L block smokes and they throw a little bit of utility on the back of a silo and they're completely hoodwinked they get ramped for free because of how much conditioning has worked out for them we're into this 5v4 penguin gets another one on that outside lurk and sure shane can pull things back but he's heavily wounded this 4v4 is a nightmare to retake for the timberman behab have completely out called here yeah, their positionings aren't going to be the greatest. They need to be able to utilize these kills. And there's Drew making a bit of presence. Does actually win that fight. And there it is. The crossfire is just too good. Gonzo able to find those two. And there we go. A two-round lead is going to be obtained here from B-Hop. I love the coordination that they have, right? I mean, it's really simple. It's nothing too fancy. Like, again, like you said, like Penguin's playing out there. He even finds a lure kill. That's massive. That plays a huge effect. Yeah, and it, it's very clear to me that Behop have done their homework. There's a reason why they've picked this map. It seems like they've got great ideas out in full effect, and Timberman have no idea how to deal with them. And this is the problem with the new roster. You know, your CT, your CT sides, your rotations aren't as efficient. You don't have protocols in play to have a certain player be on rotate. You don't know when to rotate in certain situations, whether you should gamble. And Behop are taking full advantage of that. They're just so aware of the tendencies of how these Timberman players like to play it. They like to gamble a little bit more. And so far, it's it's looking really, really good for the T's. Relegated down to pistols now for the Timberman. They aggress into Squeak Door. And again, here comes the outside smokes. This time, a, a different variation. They throw a smoke in front of the lockers. And they'll throw a mini smoke as well, just to take all of that outside space. It gives them free reign to potentially walk up into heaven and then crunch onto that A site. Yeah, no reply at all here from Timberman at all. I mean, this round's a bit of a, I mean, technically it can be a wash, right? I mean, they don't really have any pistols, but we have to see in this next gun round. I mean, they, they have to be able to figure out something to be aggressive, right? I mean, I think we saw that one in round number four, they tried to, you know, push outside and they just got crushed, but I mean, they're going to have to do something a little bit different here to bring things back because now we're going to be talking a three-round lead. It's a CZ and a USP now for the last two remaining CTs. Maybe they can find one more. Maybe, just maybe. Caster Curse. Oh, no. There we go. Frankie is going to pick that one up. Oh, but he cannot retrieve the AK. Dare does, though. And I think he might be able to get out of dodge here. Oh, that might be the wrong decision to hide behind red. Yeah. <laughs> but Not the best one. He needs to hold on to this at this point. It'd be great for the money. Snav's on 2K. And, of course, you know, they'll have money in the next. But having that AK on the CT side would be lovely, but they box him in. Andrew shuts it down. A sixth on the board now for B-Hop. They're climbing, racking up rounds now. Another opportunity for Timberman to bounce back. But so far, I'm, I'm really impressed with what I'm seeing from this crew. Yeah, definitely an impressive T side. I mean, and this is what I was kind of mentioning a little bit before. I mean, for T side, it's not, you know, I mean, it's pretty close. I mean, I feel like, you know, B Hop have a pretty good, like, dead center, even like 50 50 essentially on their T and CT. It's been a little bit of a lackluster, you know, their last game was against Pain where they lost 16 3. So, uh, a little oh, bit of you, a little bit of a. You don't redemption. beat Pain on this yeah, map. Exactly. I'm <laughs> well, sorry. I was going to say, this and is I the map you want to play. Yeah, I, I don't think there's anybody in ECL that could, could touch Payne's nuke. I mean, yeah, was, you see how big Azera calls, it's it's not possible. They got three but rounds. Though. Clearly, right now, they, they're they're showing that they're made of sterner stuff going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Timberman and, and perhaps advancing past them. Of course, the 5v4 does go to Timberman for now. Frankie does get the opener. And Dare chimes in as well. Aggression in ramp. Finally trying to exert some pressure. Smoked off by a teammate, but it's really up to Penguin. We've seen the amount of impact that he's done so far. Triple player set up on the A site. He's got to find a way to break up this crossfire. It's really the only way back into this round, but I don't necessarily think he has enough space to potentially crack open this bomb site. Yeah, a lot of riding on it right now. Like you said, he has been the entry point. He has been the player that's been able to find these a little bit of openings and pulls on that thread. 
And I mean, Andrew already taken out low. He's making his presence. He's being a distraction as much as possible. But Frankie does take him out. There we go. Timmerman actually cleaned this up. Potentially even flawless. And it's kind of looking like it might be so. Andrew just going to pull back. Doesn't have the bomb nowhere near him. You got to save that armor and gun. Yeah, they try to do a small little walkout in that 3v5. It doesn't work out. They don't get that instant entry. It's a bit of a Hail Mary, but they have so much money that you know you can at least attempt it, try to take some guns away, try to keep the Timberman economy honest. But this is a great sign for the CTs to hold on to all five players and vie for these last four rounds and play. Or rather five. But at this point, you know, you can still win out the half, you can still get that 9-6 lead. And I believe we have a little bit of a timeout here. I'm assuming this is going to be coming from B Hop, trying to stem the bleeding of this this Timberman comeback, so to speak, at this point. Well, they definitely got the funds, right? So I mean, they can definitely put the guns back on the board here. I mean, if they really want it as well, they could bring out the AWP. I don't know if they want to. I mean, it's been successful not having it this entire time. So I don't know if, uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? But like you said, a little bit of a pause, slow things down, clear up everything, making sure Timberman can't get on the uh, the momentum train. But what do we do? We see anything different from Timberman? Do we just kind of see that you know same setup that we're normally seeing right now? Or I guess so the question well, is going to be: Do they want to be a little bit more adventurous? You can see that uh, the the aggression that they're showing out on ramp is working out. It's it really comes down to to, to dare as a point man. You, you see him aggress down into secret, take an early duel into top marshmallow, or you see him take an early fight down here into squeaky as well, there and it, it works is. out. That's what's been working for the Timberman. As soon as they get that man advantage. B-Hop can't necessarily find answers in the 4v5s. They're going to go to outside yet again. They throw the diagonal smokes, but this time they're going to go up mini. Try to pressure these players, but Shane stands strong. Yeah, look at that there. There's even Penguin and Feral able to find those two, but it's just Trade City. Now Penguin by himself gets caught with a little bit of a spray, and there we go. One round difference here to bring things back to a tie game, and, and this is might going to be a light or purchase here from B-Hop. No ball and plan again. Puts him in a bit of a dire here in the money money category. But I'm loving what we're seeing from Timberman. They're reacting well. Like you said, Dare is getting activated now. He's finding that first duel, winning it. So that kind of gives Timberman that like boost of confidence. They get themselves back in contention. Yeah, and he's a very momentum-based player. So when he gets hot, he stays hot for, for quite a bit of time. And you want him to get activated, as you're saying. And in this light purchase... They're just gonna throw a little bit of utility onto this A site, see what they can see what they can find. Very interesting smoke there. I, I'm not necessarily oh, sure what the goal of it is. I, I'm gonna go back in the demo and, and check that out. But it's beyond over. the Molotov killed from Feral, it's it's an equalizing round from the Timberman. Mm -hmm. The buy is out, and whatever great work B Hop were able to do at the first half of the first half has seemingly been unwritten. Yeah, and I think that smoke was meant to like block it off just enough for somebody above, like on hut not being able to see. But I think they I missed think that's it. What it was. Yeah, yeah, I think they just missed it. Like it was a cheeky idea. I love it, but I think it was just the the wrong lineup because it didn't look like it extended too far. But enjoy those smokes while we can right now until things change. But <laughs> there's Dare again, able to find another opener. This is just changing things around. Andrew oh, that's brings things back. Up. That's a good reply. And now look at that. As soon as they get that kill, they just take down ramp. They're going to rush into the lower site. They ain't messing around at all, Paladin. And Dare's the point of contact for the rotation. He won't be able to get involved immediately. But the bomb should be able to go, to, go down in this 4v4. We've seen what they're able to do in these man-even situations when the bomb goes down on the B site. And now they've got a prime opportunity as well. The flash tries to go in, but... Feral actually gets the trade through into the 3v3 and all three players are sitting double side. A nice double Ooh. swing that comes in the radio. That's big. And now even another commitment comes in from Gonzo. He's trying to equalize it, but he's not able to. So now Andrew has to come up big. But there it is. It's done. It's a bit of a scrappy one, but there we go. We finally see Timberman. They take this lead. They haven't been able to do it. They've been doing the clawback. Now they've gained the seventh round. We're going in into round number 14, and there's not much left here for the first. Yeah, a bit odd there in that 3v3 situation for B-Hop. They really wanted to fight for radio control, but in, the, in a post-plant situation like that, you know, you've got so many so many different places that you could 
pick. You know, you could pick the top of ramp and uh, play for the bomb. You could play back silo. You could play back pocket. You, you know, you, you've got um, so many different angles to choose from. And instead, they opt to, to, to stick it to Timberman, and that's exactly what they want. They love to take those raw aim duels, and Dare is chiming in for yet another opening frag. 13 and 4, 14 rounds deep. He's not slowing down. Yeah, that's a good pickup now. I mean, Andrew Ooh. does get a nice little bit of a shot. Okay, a little bit of overextension here from Snav. We're going to back to the 4 and 4. Oh my goodness, death from above. Ain't going to happen here. Dare still finds one. Good reply back, and now it's just down to Penguin. Not long for this world. An 8-6 scoreline as we go into that last round of this first half. AWB can be purchased from Dare, no problem. But if you're B-Hop, look, that momentum has been completely ripped out from under you, and you need this 7th to, to really be proud of what you've been able to produce in this half. Because don't get me wrong, I mean, I, there's been some great calls from B-Hop. I like some of these calls out of spawn, some of these conditioning elements when they throw these outside smokes, but Timberman and, and more importantly Dare has completely thwarted all of their plans. And now we're having a little bit of missed utility. Snav's got free reign to see if they cross outside. He knows now at this point that this is a bluff. So now what do B Hop actually opt in for? They're just gonna completely default sit out in the top of the lobby, see if they can try to punish Dare. But Dare is very, very smartly not aggressing in this scenario. Yeah, definitely changing pace. Double player here are going to be on Rafter from the CT side. Making lots of noise, though, from the Ts. They're going to drop the smoke, so they're going to be able to disperse these, but there's not a lot left, right? Mm -hmm. You got two of them. So they definitely can do the wall if they need to. They have been successful, right? I mean, when we talked about the first half, I mean, they were getting that secret control pretty easily. But instead, they actually mix it up. Now they're going to try to rush things out. They're in the yard. I think they even blinded themselves. A little bit awkward, but... Now they're just going to press forward. This is a interesting setup here, and Kel's still kind of holding the ground here from heaven. This is tough, man. You've got 35 seconds left on the clock. Penguin has finally made it up to Heaven Rafters. But it is such a t tough scenario to get these players involved. You've got the front locker smoke. You've got the front mini smoke. And that's the kill that might be able to crack open the A bomb side. Drew pulls one back. So does Gonzo. But you still got another player stuck in Squeaky. That's the kill that they need. Kel gets another. And now it activates Frankie here. It's all left up to Gonzo. And he can't get it done. Nine rounds for Timberman. What a turnaround in the half. We'll see if they can close out B Hop's map pick of Nuke after the break.
Well, it was a, a big lead here for B-Hop, but then it was Timberman that were able to bring things back and take a big comfort lead for the first half. But yeah, off we go for the second on Nuke. Glass and Paladin to see if we can close this one out. Huge resiliency from Timberman. We've seen so many times where they crumble under that mental pressure. And now they've got a chance to run things over. At least Drew only left up in ramp. And this triple ramp setup just completely disintegrates like sand. And now... Timberman, I've got a free route of the B bomb site. Andrew is one of the only players left up in here. They actually decide to opt away and they just abandon ramp altogether. They go back in the top site. Penguin, I believe. Okay, no, Penguin is actually back in ramp. So they've completely outsmarted B hop here. And this 4v2 is quite hard to actually get through at this point. Honestly, I think B-Hop should just save in this scenario. You've got a kit that you can mm -hmm. save over, Vest. And, you know, if some of these players haven't taken any damage whatsoever, maybe you've got a $30, $50 helmet upgrade. But <laughs> that's not happening. No, no, definitely not. I was thinking, yeah, the same thing. It should be a good save here. But I don't know if that's going to be the case. And uh, looking like Timberman, they are going to be able to put themselves in double digits. But... Loving what we're seeing, and this is where I talked about Timberman. This is their strongest side on this map. I mean, both these teams, I think you agree with me. I think they're pretty much dead even when you talk about, you know, statistically on this map alone. But this is kind of a, a big situation here for Beehop. They need this map win. Otherwise, things could be at uh, a little bit sloppy here on Vertigo. And we know the kind of incredible T sides that Timberman can show on Vertigo. There are speed demons, to say the least, on, on that map. It, it would get very ugly very quickly if if we get there and Timberman have that 1-0 start. The force buy comes in from B-Hop. Feral with the Mag-7. And Drew with a MP9. And look, you know, Andrew is able to actually utilize the dualies that were saved in the round previous. And it's not bad. It's, it's, it's not a bad weapon to have in this anti-force buy. Meanwhile, Timberman pumping the brakes a little bit. After that aggressive ramp take, they decided to slow things down. Holding for some sort of ramp aggression, but nothing to be found. No lobby crunch either. And now they pounce. The triple ramp setup in the pistol previous has been completely dislodged. And instead, they have focused a lot of their resources in topside. And nothing of that will actually be available. Timberman should have... A pretty simple route into this lower bomb site. They have to deal with Andrew. Andrew! But there's too many bodies for them to deal with. Yeah, that was good though. Look at that coordination we saw, right? One player in the back, one player in the front, and that just made it way more of an issue for the duelies. Because like you said, that was a good position that Andrew could have been able to find something, but I don't think there's much to find on this one. Timberman, they lose two men so far in this one, and AK's picked up here for Gonzo. I mean, he's just looking for duels. Okay. He's able to get a nice shot though on the snap, maybe a little bit more. Almost, but... Not enough. And there we go. 11th gained here for Timberman. And they only need five more. And boy, oh boy. We're going to the high grounds of Vertigo. Yeah. Nice uh, job to deal with the kind of bait setup that they had sitting in radio and sitting at the bottom of double. But sorting through with that gives Timberman an opportunity to double for itself. Interesting purchase from Andrew. Glass cannon, AWP, and a complete eco from the rest of the CTs. You don't see this every day, Laz. No, you don't. This is a this is a weird one for me. I feel like I've seen a lot of things, but this is uh, different. Okay, it's going to work, though. Andrew, he's made it known. He's got it off. But that's good now. So they start things off. They win that duel, right? They give themselves the player advantage. But... Frankie's already made his way down into secret, already getting a lot of control. This is a lot of pressure for Andrew, though. Andrew has to be able to get multi-kills here. These USPs are just not going to be enough. And he doesn't want to actually get that involved this time around. I, you can see that Frankie, he's made all his all, all the way down into that lower bomb site. He's gotten all of secret control. They're going to throw outside smokes yet again. And Andrew will not be able to find any sort of a gap within this they're gonna try to gr cross i wouldn't be surprised if andrew tries to throw some pot shots it. he doesn't actually but i mean this round 
even though there's 45 seconds left at this point, you can see that they've completely gambled on that top site. Frankie's got the vent cut off. Frankie okay, actually gives it up. Yeah, he gives it up, but, yeah. Uh, Andrew, I don't believe will be here. Oh, that molly. Enough. I was thinking that molly might have been able to catch them enough off guard. Look at that. Andrew gets taken alive. He's getting roasted here. He's still alive. He's able to find another kill. Hang on. Things have switched around. I talked about him getting multi-kills. He's sitting on a triple right now. And now this is a player advantage. This is a four-on-two situation. Timberman, they need to be able to find something big here with the double AKs. Dare does find the head of Penguin. Looking for a little bit more. Andrew's still playing in the back. And there we go. These AKs are just starting to roar. Andrew finds the fourth. One more kill and he's got himself the ace. A flash comes in from Dare. It's pushing him back. Timer's below half now. Doesn't have a kit. So Dare has done a good job. It's oh. going to be the ace. But I don't think there's enough time here for Andrew. It's just not enough heavy lifting. And it's going to be a 12th gained here for Timberman. I really wanted to question this purchase from Andrew, but he proves me wrong. I mean, sure, they don't get the round. It's a lot of damage, though. And you've got to give credit to him. He, you know, pushing the, the first initial kill was, was magnificent, but the reorientation down in the lower bomb site, reading that situation, playing ahead of the Molotov and getting another kill in. And the proactivity to, to stay fighting in that retake situation. Perhaps if he had armor behind it, he could have been a little bit more aggressive and, and shave some time off the clock. But it's kind of in hindsight at this point. He gets to retain the AWP, gets a vest behind it. But they need rounds now, B-Hop. Yeah, they really do. Sure, we, we've had some nice signs. We've seen some really good calls. We've seen some really good frags. But at the end of the day, they're six rounds behind. And to have their map pick snapped up from right underneath them would be heartbreaking. It really would be. Especially with that last round where you see Andrews getting multi-kills like that. Gets the ace, right? It's just not enough. This is where they have to pick things back up. I mean, this is the full gun round. A lot of investment for this one. Timberman have already made the way into secret. But there's a good off angle here from Penguin. He might be able to catch them off guard. Will they clear this? This is important. If he holds the trigger, waits things out, he is going to be able to find that double. That's massive. So now... They get the reply back, but b have put themselves in an advantage situation. Snap's already down to 31, and they only have just under a minute here to move. And the amount of damage has been done to Snap and Dare. 31 HP, 56 HP, respectively. It's such a mountain to climb in this 3v4. No map control to really speak of beyond Dare's advances in the lower bomb site. Shane posted up on ramp. They're going to try to join hands and, and make their way to this lower bomb site. Snav's made some headway as well. But they've got to still deal with Drew. They've got to deal with Andrew as well. There's just not enough manpower to deal with this scenario. And even if they get the bomb plant, it's just a concession. And it does go down. Gary's left in an impossible 1v4. Gonzo flying headshot. And finally... Finally, we get a round on the board for B-Hop. It feels like it's been forever at this point. It really has. I mean, it was a 9-6 half. They finally put up themselves a 7th here to bit a little bit of life in this one. But and pretty convincing, too. I mean, they only lost Penguin that round. So not a bad thing to see here. But this is a long road ahead of them. They still need to bring things back. I mean, even despite winning all those rounds in a row, Timberman, they have to pretty much go for the light round here in terms of the money, right? I mean, they're sitting at that, like, low 2000s. So knowing these guys, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised for, you know, the old whole W and let's see what happens. Yeah, it's a long road ahead now in this comeback. They will be able to breathe a sigh of relief in this round, build up a bank. I mean, they already are sitting pretty, pretty soundly at this point. Andrew plucks Frankie out of the air. Should have a little bit of a shooting gallery here, but he's getting pressured. Could get overwhelmed, but Penguin is here. Barrel chimes in as well, so surprisingly, Dare actually gets two for himself, sitting 21 and 8 at this point. And honestly, th those two kills are pretty important. You know, Andrew didn't have the AWP retained, and with that, he's going to have to reinvest himself. Drew has to purchase the more expensive A4. So... I mean, those two Glock kills, I, I, it seems irrelevant, but, you know, it might have some repercussions if Timberman can lock in this 13. 
Yeah, and look at the, even the utility too, right? I mean, for Timberman, I mean, they have to just keep it with the smokes, right? They they got one player snap that's fully equipped, but everybody else was smoked. So they have lots of they can go for fakes and some executes, but we'll have to see what they can do a little bit differently. Like you said too, I mean, the fact that, you know, was critical is that the fact that the op had to get repurchased. So that really does make a big effect here on the CT economy, but I think it's going to matter what happens here for round number 21. And it, it's so tough for Timberman in this round. You know, really look at the amount of utility that they have. Three smokes at a minute and 14, and they've used three of them already yeah. for those outside smokes. They're not even going to bother crossing. It looks like this lobby play is, is what they're considering, maybe go into that top site, but they don't have smokes to get rid of these Molotovs unless they want to waste it here instead of throwing it for mini. So they're going to have to really pick, pick their poison here. They're going to smoke off mini, they're going to go into this site. That's good molly too. And there's Gonzo able to find two. Feral looking for a little bit more. And there we go. B-Hop. They've hopped their way to get some multi-kills. And now, four on two situation. Timberman. They have Dare alive. He's been putting up some big numbers with 21 kills. He's going to have to do something big as well. Snab just can't get the job done. A one on four now required for picking up a 13th. No utility to work with. Bomb control non-existent. Is here for B-Hop territory. And I mean, it's about 20 seconds. This is just about picking up some frags, maybe just winning some duels. Possibly time is ticking. Dare has to get moving now. Barrel holding a little bit of an off angle. Gives his presence known. He's actually Ooh. able to find that shot. Gets the bomb, but it's just a little too late. And there we go. Big advantage comes down to two alive and B-Hop. They're keeping the streak going, Paladin. Yeah, there's a real world that if, you know, Dare could have bound down to the vent and he escapes, even on 12 HP, he's got enough space to potentially win that out, but it isn't to be. That's what happens, you know, when you only have three smokes up. You don't have any flashbangs to get rid of guns. You don't have a Molotov to get him get him off of opposite vent. So he just gets to sit there and, and get a free double at that point. It's, it's easy pickings. You know, there's no real opportunity to properly trade that, and Feral chimes in with his topside anchoring as well. It's it's a very easy conversion from B-Hop, and Andrew continues laying down the law, down to 1 HP, but he still gets that opening frag nonetheless. And B-Hop are primed and ready to get themselves double digits. Make this only a two-round game. Such a great thing to see, too, right? I mean, this is where we were talking about where it was a 12-6, and like you said, I mean, B-Hop have been able to bring themselves back kind of a second wind, right? I mean, now they're just starting to breeze through this. And Timberman, I mean, this is a frustrating position for them too because they had that lead, they lose it. Well, they are losing it. I shouldn't say they've lost it yet, but they have been losing that lead. They've been losing that comfort. And for a team like this, we talked about too, I mean, definitely not going to be easy for the players to digest this one. Get to get another... Even on that one HP, Gonzo shuts things down. And now, it's really the time to see the kind of mental resiliency that Timberman have. And if they can hold strong. We know how on call it has been at this point. And Dare's trying to switch things up. They're going to abandon the five, eight, uh, 5 rifle approach. Get out that AWP for Dare. See if he can shake things up with some opening frags. This time on that offensive half. Obviously, it's going to be much more difficult to get that active on this side of things. But it is what worked and, and brought so much success to Timberman CT side. This time around, he opts in to potentially go for a little bit of a hut peek. But doesn't get anything done. It's Drew that actually pushes through the ramp smoke with the flash prime from Gonzo. And... Every single idea from Timberman is just getting torn to shreds. Look at the confidence starting to build on these B-Hop players. It's only Frankie left up in a 1v5. What has happened here? It's like we're seeing two completely different teams now, Blaz. really is. I mean, this is the thing. Timberman were just, again, coming out right out the gate in the second half. They looked flawless. They were just taking rounds. Pretty much no issue. And then I don't know what happened. But something's just kind of... Put the thorn in the side against them, and now they can't just seem to buy around, even if they try to. And relying on a one on five from Frankie, this is asking a lot. I mean, if you're going to peak one on one by like this, I mean, this is possible, but this is just a very awkward situation here for Timberman. And I'm surprised we haven't seen the timeout being called yet either. 
nothing. No no sort of momentum stopping here for Timberman. And I would love for them to call a timeout. I think it's a great call. Great little utility usage here from Feral. That Molotov is probably going to spread. And oh, that one yeah, is. <laughs> another one for good measure. 11 HP. The ticks have been heard. Everything's been noted. I honestly don't know why Frankie's here at this point. I'd, I'd consider saving. But perhaps to keep the money on the same page, he goes for it. Dies before the time expires. 11 rounds on the board now for B-Hop. EVB still retained for, for Andrew. And they're looking really, really clean at this point. I mean, that ramp take looked flat to say the least for Timberman. And you've got to give credit to Gonzo. You've got to give credit to Drew for being proactive through that ramp smoke. Oh, we start to see that aggression working, right? We saw that in the first half. The CTs were trying to be a little, little bit aggro, trying to get the job done. Didn't work out, but now when B-Hop does it, it does pay up pretty big wonders. Tech Nines and Deagle is going to be here for Timberman. We'll have to see what they can do. Molly's going to be in the placement. Looks like they're grouping up towards inside lobby. Molly going to land on top of the hut. It's not going to matter at all. Farrell, Ooh, holy boy, just flash. whiffs it. That's a great flash. Now the Tech Nines can do their magic. This is where they should be able to win these close quarter fights. Ooh. This is going to be the all picked up, but Shane's able to get a little bit of her life back from his teammates. And I don't know how they've done it, but they've been able to put a round into their pocket with the worst composition of guns, I, I feel like, in this whole entire second half. Yeah, those flashes were absolutely incredible. I mean, you saw the player on top hut that had to deal with the Molotov coming, and as soon as he smokes off, he tries to hop off a hut, and he, hits, he gets dealt with with a huge flash in his face. Goes down, and at that point, there's just, the T's are just far too spread out for the player in Rafters to get anything done. So sure, he gets one kill back, but that's where those Tech Nines sing. They take their time, and, you know, Andrew tries to scramble up the vent. You have a player pushing through mini, but it's a little too late. At that point, they've closed the distance. They shut things down, and an unlikely round for Timberman. Perhaps a blessing at the tail end of this map. Sure, you've got money now for B-Up, but you've got to be starting to feel a little bit of pressure building. Well, smoke wells come in, and this is what we saw B-Hop do, right? I mean, they, they always put the smoke wells down. It was really quiet. They got that secret control. There was no, you know, contest here. The good Molly actually comes in for Timmerman, so that's going to push back. That's Penguin. So now they've gained this real estate. But they're not going to press forward on it, but at least they can just hold on to it. I like this. And now B-Hop are getting a little bit more cluttered in these sites, right? I mean, they kind of have to turtle this. They're going to look like they want to go for the ramp hit. Some good smokes and always being placed here from Snab and Drew gets a bit over well overwhelmed here, and that's gonna be a big kill coming in. That's a nice one. And now they're really considering their options. You know, they've got all this ramp control, they're thinking about going down this lower site, but you've gotta keep your eyes on Farrell and you gotta keep your eyes on Andrew. Penguin is this lower side anchor, he needs one before going down. But he actually doesn't even opt to, to initially fight. This flank seemingly does not net them anything. I think Timberman have dodged a bullet and a half here. This 5 4 to be honest, it's not the best decision to make, but I would save here. Yeah, this is a tough one because I think they almost want to keep those guns. And that you can see Gonzo is trying to see if he can maybe get some good you know, ground. Just gets removed. I mean, yeah, Penguin does pick up a little kill. That's not going to mean anything at all. That's a good one for Timberman now. So they've been able to pick up two here. B-Hop, their money situation is terrible. It's not the greatest. Drew and Gonzo are going to have to figure out something here to complement the M4s with B-Hop. But I think, yeah. again, a lot rides here for Andrew to find something in this round, right? I mean, his op has been pretty, a pretty big presence. Yeah, and you, you finally saw that they, they were able to circumvent that by initially taking ramp. And with how decisive they were there, it didn't allow for Farrell to get settled in on that ramp flank. It could have gotten really ugly, really fast if they just pumped the brakes there. So they should be definitely thanking their lucky stars that they were able to dispatch of that, that threat. And 14 rounds on the board now. Final buy for B-Hop to defend. And what a time it would be if they were to lose their economy at the tail end of this map. This is There's just so much riding on this for the CTs. They've got to hold strong here if they want to stay within this map. Look at Andrew. I think he's aggressing down into 
hut there. Yeah, I think he's already pushed himself all the way through. We'll get to see that here in a second. I think his positioning is decent, but it looks like he actually fell back. You can see him with the x-ray. Changing up his position now. Smoke's still going to be passed around here from outside, but back to the 3-2, right? This is what we saw before. They put the smoke walls up. They try to creep through mini. Maybe as somebody, you know, put a bit of a fake, and that looks like it's going to be Frankie's job. He's going to try to sell this thing, be the lurk. Be the dagger into the back. Just under a minute, though, Paladin. I mean, they're just burning the clock now. Yeah, and you finally start to see a little bit of reactions from B-Hop. They decide to go for some secret aggression. And they're going to look to try to take a duel against Frankie. Frankie's got to come up big. He needs at least one, but it doesn't go to plan. That forces Snap into an extra duel. And now this contact play looks very, very flimsy. Farrell will not be dislodged from the top of Hut. Kel in an impossible 1v5 and you've got to give credit to B-Hop for staying proactive, sticking to their guns, aggressing in secret, catching Frankie off guard and that 12th round is all about that proactivity. Yeah, I'm not sure what we just saw there. I mean, it, it was just like Timberman, they had some good ground and then all of a sudden they just kind of put all the eggs in one basket and it, uh, it was gone. Like, I don't know what happened. I mean, it was B-Hop just reacting perfectly, picking up multi-kills within seconds. I mean, another gun round is going to come through here from Timberman, but just an awkward round we saw from number 26. And now we're starting to see a little bit more aggression coming in. I believe it's Penguin, actually, that's pushing all the way up. Andrew gives a nice old haircut to Dare, and that's a big kill because Dare, like we've been talking about, is the one that's been putting up some massive numbers for this team. Farrell going to be on the high ground. Oh. He's going to get removed as well. And that's a big one to find. You know, you've gotten rid of this top hut player. They've boosted up to try to fight Andrew in heaven. They don't find a way to convert. Drew's got a bountifully down in the lower aspect of the upper bomb site. But Gonzo and Andrew just absolutely lock it down. Incredible trading from them. And somehow, some way, they get their 13. They've got real dicey there. As soon as Feral goes down. You know, that A bomb site is really susceptible, but they put all their eggs in one basket to get a heaven frag. They don't get to convert that kill, and then that round just gets stalled out. They, they don't find a way into killing those back site players. Well, back again we go. Money on the board here for Timberman. They can make this work again, I guess, but we'll have to see. These rounds are looking decent in the beginning. Like they, you know, they can either find that first entry or they can get the trade right away. And then it just falls apart. Something happens. It's it's the mid late round that just seems to be kind of the problem. Op's still here for Andrew. He's ready to go. Op available for Dare. So he's going to try this again. Won't go on, to on top of Silo this time. Molly's getting ready. So this is going to land inside. Dare's got the good lineup here. Can it flush these players out? They are really putting a lot of focus onto this A site. They just want to keep committing to it, and it has not been working. They are adamant for it. Oh, there it is. What an entry That's for big... Frankie. They don't go on top of it, though. No, they don't. They pull back, and I actually like this because this is what's been failing. They get that first entry, then they rush the site, and then they just get annihilated. Feral now gets caught with a molly. Does have to actually able to find two, though. In a weird position, an awkward position too. Finds the multi-kill. Now puts them back in the vantage. And they're just going to swing hot. They're just going to swing this together. And now Dare and M4 to survive. And no, not even that. And we're back to a tie. And what a time for b -Op to come alive. Sure, it was labored. And they had to come back from, from a couple 4v5s. But they managed to pull it off. 14-14. We're going all 30. Or maybe even more. Timberman don't want to back down. They want to win this one in re regulation. They force into it Galil's on Frankie and Dare. And all the bells and whistles for B-Hop to ask for. They've got the money in the back pocket. They survived that swing round. And now they're trying not, not to look back. Here come the oh, man. This is... L block smokes. Yeah, they will be there again. Is there a bit of a gap on one of them? No, maybe not. It's hard to see from this angle, so maybe things are fine. 
I think it it worked out if Frankie was able to get down into yeah. the secret no problem. But we've seen him get this advanced positioning before and not be able to actually capitalize on it. And it's not necessarily his fault per se, but they've got to find a way to make that work. They try to go searching for something outside and ramp. Just a couple of dry fights here. And this is exactly what B-Hop love. They're in a quite quite the fantastic position at this point. 5v3. No utility off of Timberman. And keep in mind, their funds, it's been completely sapped. They don't have any option at this point but to potentially group up and tackle this B-bomb site. Yeah, they're committing to it. They have to now. I mean, time's ticking. 35 seconds. Andrew get able to get the multi. There it is. We talked a lot about it. Critical hits, and there we go. Frankie's just kind of thinking, what on earth do I do? 24 seconds, a one on five, and uh, I got a Galil. Might be able to find this kill. No, he will not. And there we go. Map point's going to be back in favor for B-Hop. A long road ahead, and they have made it happen so far. One more round, and we can be seeing things over on Virgo, which is going to be the pick for Timberman, but we'll have to see what Timberman can do. They've been in this position before. It's gonna be it's gonna be grueling, but I'm excited for this one. I'll tell you that. It's not pretty, but they've got to find a way to claw their way back into this one. It's 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 not gonna be pretty, but they've got to get it done. Otherwise, B up will snag away their map pick after quite the. Momentum building from Timberman. They had that huge streak come back from the CT side and then rolling on through with their pistol conversions. But since then, you know, thanks to an unlikely pistol half by, we're in this scenario where there's a possibility that Timberman can take us to overtime. Frankie gets down into lower, but this time he's got his entire team behind him. The spam is absolutely immaculate from Penguin. 4 HP for Shane. And I'm not sure what he was able to spot out there. The UI can be a little finicky. And they've got another player down in the lower. To so much information. Take, take, to, take to this, but, you know, Penguin's got to go big here. It yeah, he really does. He is playing a bit of an off angle, spraying it through, but they actually been able to dodge it. It's like Neo in the Matrix, so now, but it doesn't matter. It's just going B-hop all the way through this. Giving themselves a three on two. Frankie is still in the back of the site. The smoke's going to cover him off. He's trying to use that little bit of a one way. But you can see the bomb is just kind of in the right hand corner. He just gets removed. So now Kel with the Galil in hand. Three CTs close on by. Can he do this? He finds the first. But now this is a one on three asking for 20 seconds with a flash remaining of utility. Going to go for the swing. And there he is. He is able Ooh. to find another one. So he's brought it back to the one-on-one. -on -one. This is definitely doable. 10 seconds. So the plant has to come through now. Andrew, the guy who completely turned around everything for B-Hop will close it out. Kellon, 11 HP, cannot get it done. And somehow, someway, thanks to some absolute heroics from Andrew, drops the 30 bomb, knifes in absolute glee and secures the 16-14. It was hard fought. You know, a lot of things that they had to overcome.